In the previous lecture, we discussed the exchange forces and today we will discuss the reality behind the exchange forces. We discuss the separation of two states are of two particle system. So if the particles are distinguishable particles, we were having the two states which was psi A and psi B. So our psi A and psi B are actually orthonormal. Orthonormal where functions are orthonormal states. When the particles were distinguishable particles and we were studying their separation, the expectation value of the square of their separation, we came to this result. And when we consider the particles as identical particles, then in the case of identical particles, we are having two situations, bosons particles, which are with integral spin, and fermions which are with half integral spin. Their separation came out to be just like the distinguishable particles, but this additional term came here, which is the additional term is X and A, B. And if I write this in integral form, then it is from minus infinity to plus infinity, and psi A conjugate x, psi B and dx. In one direction I can write it like this. This term was an additional term compared to the distinguishable particles. Now look at this term and for the fermions again we got this is additional term. We will discuss the minus and plus in a while, but first see that what this term is meaning. This is the expectation value of x. And the expectation value of x in the two states. If I am having psi a0, then the particle will be inside b. And if psi b is 0, it will be psi a. But if the two states are present at the same time, then for the identical particles, I cannot say which particle is in which state. Or if the states will be changing. If the particles will be changing, or the states will be changing. So we keep the states in the same position. We are not exchanging the states. But the particles are being exchanged. But we will not come to know that whether the particle has exchanged the places or not. Because the particles are identical particles. We cannot say. In case of distinguishable particle, this thing wasn't happening. But in case of identical particles, we are having this combined situation. And that's why we call this that this is like overlay of the wave functions. The two wave functions are overlapping each other. And this is causing the exchange forces. Like when the particle will exchange the states, then what will happen? And this is the term. Now for the identical particles and the bosons particle, this is minus and for the fermions, this is plus. So now we are discussing the separation and let's say that this is the along this axis for example, I am studying the separation of these states are these particles. Now, the separation if, for example, this is the value, some value comes out here because this is the expectation value, it will be in the form of a number. And let's say that this is the value which is coming here, which I will call that this is the distinguishable particle 
expectation with you or the separation. Then, if on this side the separation is increasing and on this side the separation is decreasing, so I will have the minus sign means that for the bosons I will be here and for the fermions the separation will increase. So it is a situation like that this portion or uh, this value comes out for the bosons which is less than means the particles are now closer compared to the distinguishable particles and this portion is for the fermions. The particles come uh, just behave like a part when they are fermions. The plus sign here shows this thing that the separation is increased. Uh, if I do a plotting like this, then let's say we are having two distinguishable particles and this is one particle and this is the other particle. And this is there is these are point charges so for the exaggeration for just showing this thing I am just enlarging them or exaggerate the geometry of them. They are point charges. So point particles. Here let's say for example this is the equilibrium separation or the distance between them the separation for the distinguishable particles. Now when the particles become bosons, what will happen? They will go slightly closer to each other by an amount which is xab, two times this. They will come closer and when they are fermions, then the fermions will go slightly away from each other. Like this. And the behavior is like that when the particles are identical, some separation between them, when they become identical, the separation changes. For the bosons, the particles come closer to each other. And for the fermions, they go apart from each other. So it seems like the bosons are having some attractive force, while the fermions are having repulsive force. They are repelling each other. And this force we call exchange force. Exchange for the reason that when the overlap comes in, like one particle is in one and another is in the other. But as the particles are identical, we cannot recognize them. So if they will exchange with each other, we will not come to know. But this additional term will come in here. Clear? If the particle will become distinguishable particles, and they do exchange, then we will come to know that particle one has gone to the second state and two has gone to the first state. But for the identical particles, we don't know this thing. For distinguishable particles, this term is equal to zero. Because the overlay we can understand. But for the identical particles, this overlay will occur and we will have to count this one. That means exchange between the states will be governed by like this force. Now it's not a force in reality but it behaves like a force, attractive force and repulsive force. Okay. You will have to uh, see this thing. Let me write this in a combined form. So x1 minus x2 squared, this is equal to x squared a plus x squared b minus 2 x a x b and minus a plus 2 x 
AB, the overlapping term, is mod square. So this minus n plus, and you remember from all your calculations that here you are having plus and here you are having minus, plus minus, which we normally do. So I can write this thing like this, that if I write this in the normal way, then it will be plus and it is minus. And here I write with this two minus and plus with two. And this is x in a b mod square. Clear? So what I did? This is when this is plus, just like here. We were writing 1, 0 and 0, 0 state like in the triplet combination and in the singlet combination. So plus here and minus here. So here is plus and here is minus. When this is plus, we will call this symmetric row function or uh, symmetric. When this is minus, it is anti-symmetric. But here we have minus and plus 2 with this one. So they will differentiate between the bosons and the fermions. We will explain this thing more as well. We will take an example for this to understand. But the normal way to write is plus minus. And here it is occurring is minus plus. If I do multiply these two, I will get minus, right? Plus and minus, it will become minus. Here I will write minus. So this minus will actually make minus and minus plus. Clear? Okay. So you will have to understand this thing that the minus and plus are the opposite with each other. So minus and plus 2 multiplied with this. So the plus we say, the plus symbol is for the symmetric wave function and the minus for the anti-symmetric wave function. Plus for the symmetric and minus for the anti-symmetric. Look here to these states. These states are symmetric states. For example, where I am having plus, here is plus. So this state out of the triplet state, if I exchange these two, minus sign is not coming out. So I will say that this is a symmetric state. This and this state are also symmetric states. So the whole triplet configuration is composed of symmetric wave functions. While the singlet here, if I exchange these two, minus sign will come out. So it means the singlet state is anti-symmetric. Clear? Plus for the symmetric and minus for the anti-symmetric. You will have to now understand this thing in the terminology. Here minus, in here plus. Now Understand this one. Right, it is plus minus and then minus and plus 2 with the other. So the above sign minus is for the symmetric wave function and the plus sign is for the anti symmetric. Clear? You got this one? Because earlier I explained this one. That here is actually plus minus, but with 2 is the minus and plus. Clear? So, we will elaborate this one, uh, this more as well by considering the example of, by considering the example of hydrogen molecule. This is a hydrogen molecule, which is H2. 
Now you can see that what, what is the basis of the bonding and anti-bonding. In chemistry we study in terms of bonds, in quantum mechanics we will now see that what is the origin of that bonding. For example, consider two hydrogen atoms in ground state. Ground state means that N, capital N will be equal to 1, small n will be equal to 0. We are ignoring spin at the moment. So only the principal quantum number and the orbital quantum number and the ground state we are discussing. So here, let's say we are having a proton here and another proton here. This is one hydrogen atom and this is another hydrogen atom. What is the wave function? The wave function is associated with this. You know the hydrogen atom, the ground state wave function you have plotted. It was equal to e to the power minus r over a. You remember. So minus r over a it was decaying like this. If this is a data, so the hydrogen wave function will be decay here. The maximum probability of the electron probability will be here, while as it goes away, the wave function will decay. Similarly, here as well. And now what we are doing, now the isolated atoms we are combining to form a molecule. So we are having two hydrogen atoms, they are individual ground state wave functions will be like this, so it is centered here, 